Who is organizing production in India? The Chinese? No, the farmers. The guys who are standing outside Delhi right now, who are playing band. They are the guys who are organizing production in this country. And they are killing them. They are literally saying, let's do our work. Don't kill them. 60% of tech startups are leaving India. because of inadequate regulations as per a cna insider report india is also becoming a fishing hub this is also causing loss of reputation do you think this ties back to like income inequality in general and you know lack of opportunities for youth why is there such a dramatic increase in inequality in india in the west you look at pretty much any country you look at india it really takes off after 1990 why is this in your view one of the main reason is monopolization and unfair competition which is jeopardizing the equality for both business houses between themselves and for the job seekers i think i feel that it is also because of the fact that we have two sections in india currently right we have the urban india wherein people are working on cutting edge technologies they're doing innovations they're very well educated and then we also have a rural india wherein people are struggling with the basic things there's lack of education because uh, the fundamental of democracies or the participation of everyone in the democracy it's not happening But why? because the media is being controlled the why vested interest is we so we had a situation where if you looked at 1945 you can see an increase in democratization overall and then suddenly it starts it seems to be going the other way why i think the number of opportunities today high paying jobs or like good opportunities is really biased and to available only for the urban crowd you keep saying urban what percentage of india do you think has the type of jobs you have 90% of urban india is doing unorganized labor is working in your houses is doing contract labor with absolutely no protection no guarantees this is a 1% versus 99% phenomena there is a huge disconnect between people who so call themselves successful and the rest of the population also you follow up question on what vikram added i think we are seeing a lot of amazing geni tools coming up like chat gpt and other and all of these are coming from western countries like india hardly has any big tools like two big reasons we lack a right framework and we also lack right talent pool and this will widen the gap of like you know urban versus rural in india so i think that's another area we would like to hear your views whatever ai you are generating producing sits on top of other networks so ai is applied on top of a network ai can be applied on top of a production network you can apply ai in a factory you can apply ai on a consumption network so you know people are consuming something you're distributing something you can apply ai on that so ai sits on top of a network right i i'll tell you a very interesting story to demonstrate the power of this thing it's not directly related to ai the united states attacks iraq okay within 25 days it is wiped out the entire iraqi military and then 6 months later something happened and suddenly us soldiers were dying every day and within a 6 month period the us army lost about a thousand armored vehicles so how did a country or a system that couldn't take on the united states at all and failed to take them on suddenly 6 months later literally broke their back what happened saddam hussein came from a tribe called the tikriti tribe this tribe was the center of the iraqi regime When Saddam Hussein realized that America is coming, he told all his Tikriti guys, "Bhaiya, tum log bhago." What did he do? He basically took 155 millimeter shells. You know, they are artillery shells, and he distributed them to all these guys. And he said, "Gaon mein ko le jao." And these guys took these artillery shells and they dug them in the ground. That's all. So what I'm trying to tell you, the Tikriti network came together, cell phone network came together, and the explosive shells came together. Three networks that were disconnected came together. and they literally obliterated the superpower in iraq so the game is about bringing unconnected networks together now what is the biggest problem in india our biggest networks are not connected at all so you guys are a tiny network you're 1% of the country a small network you're not connected to anything else i mean if you really want to bring india's power to bear 
then you have to think about these things. Networks are energy, right? The moment you bring them together, it doesn't become one plus one plus one. It becomes exponential, Bram, it just goes. If you use that framework, you can see that that's a very powerful framework in politics. It's a very powerful framework in business. Samajwadi Party Network joined with Congress Network. Earlier that network was like this, now the network is suddenly lined up together. Now, the problem is in India is that pretty much all the conversations that we're having of development, etc., etc., exclude 90% of our population. Meaning the really powerful network is sitting outside. So what is the role of technology and IT is to apply your understanding and knowledge on those networks. But right now what the game is taking place is you're in 1% or not able to apply the stuff in the large 90% of, of India. And then these, these networks are not only physical networks, right? So there are caste networks in India. There are business networks in India. There are agricultural networks in India. So that to me is an interesting way to think about it. Vision of AT is which has caused this nearly 6 million jobs in IT industry. So when we look back, means AT is we decided to bring back IT in the India and then we are here to see 6 million jobs in the country. When we are looking into the industry at last two years, nearly the headcount has reduced by 60 to 70,000 in top three companies in India. Sir, as a challenge, one in terms of the intake, where the education system is not able to support uh, the kind of skilled which is required for the new generation. Second part is the salaries structure is almost same, sir. A country the size of Singapore, you can do it using services. You can say, Bhaiya, they go. Everybody will get a services education. We'll not make anything. We will just run a pure service economy. Usme thoda sa tourism hoga. Waha pe hamara ek casino lag jayega. Waha pe ham thoda IT ka kam kar lenge, finance ka kar lenge, aur kam chala lenge. This is a dead end for a billion, 1.4 billion man country. This cannot work. So the only way you can actually give employment to your people is by getting into the business of production. How many unicorns are actually Indian? One. There are no Indian owned unicorns except I think Zeroda. Zoho. 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 Fine, Zoho. Now, please notice another thing that every single one of these unicorns organizes consumption. None of these unicorns organize production. This is a fundamentally important thing. What is developed is essentially a rent-seeking system where you have the 5, 7, 10, 15 big players. They're essentially taking, for the most part, Chinese products, selling them in India. The Chinese youngster is making out, getting a job, and our fellow is buying the phone, buying the product, and at the same time, he's not getting a job and the big guys are making a margin on the Chinese product. Okay, now, this is not sustainable because if you walk around Uttar Pradesh, you'll see, I asked a guy today, how much time do you spend on your mobile phone? He says, I spent 10 hours on my mobile phone. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's a productive resource. Who should be making something? Now, when you start to manufacture, you also start to get organized labor. Organized labor will then start to fight for a particular type of politics, right? For uh, protection of labor, for rights of labor, for pensions. So you will then have a political contest between large capital and labor, which is a healthy thing and which actually produces, which certainly in the West produced democracies and in India to a great extent produced democracy, right? The tension. What Narendra Modi is doing is a combination of a few things. Number one, don't think about production seriously. Number two, build massive monopolies. Number three, weaponize the society. And in the end, it's just going to increase. Level of violence is going to increase. Level of fear is going to increase. Level of anger is going to increase. And then at a certain point, you'll have a problem. I mean, we're not against big business. We have a problem with absolute monopolization. Why is it more important to organize production? One, more jobs. What else? Not only more jobs, but jobs in the base of the pyramid. Not jobs where you are sitting, but jobs right in the center of the pyramid, which reduces social tension, which reduces conflict, which, which gives lives to millions of people, right? So who are the guys who are organizing production? Who are the big guys who are organizing production? China? China. Vietnam. America. Vietnam now. Bangladesh now. Yeah. Surprising. Suddenly Bangladesh is like outdoing us. Korea to an extent. I went and saw Samsung and I went and saw Hyundai. Huge like cities of, right? 
And who is organizing production in India? The Chinese? No, the farmers. The guys who are standing outside Delhi right now, right? Jinki Matlab band bajar ki. They are the guys who are organizing production in this country. Or unko marne. Right? They are literally saying, Bhaiya, I'm gonna kaam karne do. Maro mat. You have to expand production from agriculture into value-added agriculture. For that you need infrastructure into more and more and more value-added stuff. That's what a successful country would do. There's no large country in the world that has grown without doing this. One fraction of data that I'm talking about, Nascom report, Web3 startups left India, 60% of them moving to Dubai, Singapore. Because of no policy, uncertain policy and regulation in India, if your government is coming in power, what will you do for that booming tech? What I started with, think about the different networks in India, the unconnected networks, and how we can apply modern technology to connect those networks. That to me is very powerful and very interesting. Like today I was in Muradabad, brass industry, production. Has any tech guy said, yeah, I'm going to go now and start organizing production in Muradabad? It's a gold mine out there. It's literally a gold mine out there. But your network is disconnected from that network. Suppose I want to open a small scale production, want to go away from all the time, 10 hours I'm spending on the phone. Suppose somebody wants to open a small scale production. There's so much of entry barrier currently for not just somebody in a village, like you talked about the maids in our uh, cities. There are a lot of entry barriers. And to top of that, of course, leakages and licenses and everything. So are there any plans if the government comes in power? So one has to think about is a first a rolling back of some of these ideas. A GST that is literally just burning the grass in front of these small and medium guys. So, tweaking the GST. Second, 14 lakh crores, karza ma to 100 guys. Now, you can either give them that money or you can give that money to small and medium business. You can either build a tax system and a structure that is designed to help monopolists or you can build one that is designed to help small and medium players. You can't do both. I actually believe that the path that India is on is non-sustainable, destructive, and will actually end in a collapse of the country. And I think the thing that needs to be done aggressively is to take the country into production, to make production centerpiece, and to protect the people, and to support the people, whether they're small businesses, medium businesses, farmers, even large businesses, who are interested in actually creating jobs for this country. Now, we would be quite aggressive on protecting farmers, MSP, which is basically, listen, your base producer here, we're going to put a floor under you. It doesn't cost that much. Then protecting the second level producers, small and medium business, people who are trying to take products out of the farm and sort of bring them to the plate. And then high tech, small and medium guys, handicraft, small and medium guys. And then linking all these centers. I would ask you to think about two or three things. What are all these networks that India is made of? How can you help in connecting them? Number two, how do we think about production? Okay, organize consumption all you want. I'm perfectly happy for that. But how can we think about organizing production? How can we help farmers organize production? The one person that we spoke about is also the percentage which uh, pays taxes regularly. Now, they are also the folks which have been neglected, I would say, by all the... Uh, all the <laughs> Don't say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, the only request that we have on behalf of many professionals is that uh, in the manifesto, if you could say that the Congress government will also be looking at you for some subsidies, like they pay the income tax, then they pay different taxes, indirect taxes. It definitely hurts them. Like if you say, if they earn a one lakh rupee salary, what they take home is probably 30,000 because it goes in direct and indirect taxes. But when it comes to healthcare, when it comes to taking a loan, insurance, medication, cancer is spreading very highly today. Yeah. The medication, everything is added up with the GST today. Yeah. So is there something that we could see in the manifesto for the IT professionals to, you know, the way, the way we build our manifesto is it's basically an open structure and the model is you just go there and you place your ideas and your views over there and we are quite open to sort of you know helping all sections so I'm sure that they would take what you're suggesting seriously.